incident at a school, I, I'm a school teacher, and there was an incident at a school where the child was being bullied by some other children, um, saying that he was uh, ex having sex with another student. Was, mind you, this is elementary school. The child got so upset. That surprised me. Got so upset, asked to go to the restroom, but in turn went home. Just went home because his house was that far from home. Went home. The staff did not find out that, they were, that this child was missing until it was around 11, and this happened like at 9. Um, when the parent got hit, the, the child called home, he called from home to the parent, and the parent was, Why are you calling from home? You know, he said, Well, this and this, you know, so the parent would happen. The child was very upset. When she got home, he was to such a big upset him that he wanted to hurt himself. The school did not know the child was gone. The school didn't even notice the child was gone. That's why. It was lunchtime. So the parent called uh, the San Antonio School District police. They in turn go to the home and they find out that he's there and he's safe. But the school really doesn't take that much. Uh, action on it. What happens with that? Because that child... Which portion of that? The, the, the portion to where the child was bullied so much that it upset it's, it's, so it's, much. It's two-fold, three-fold. Right. One issue is how, why the kid was bullied, how it was bullied. The other concern is how that kid got out of school and nobody noticed it. Exactly. Because the teachers, faculty, administrators, were the custodial parents during the day. Right. We're responsible as kids. That's why it's imperative that those doors are locked. And steps were not taken as far as let's get down to the problem. They just had like a brief meeting, and that was the end of it. Now, uh, well, the, the, the thing the, was there's two, two different things. Get us involved for the bullying part, the criminal part, and then get the folks that supervise the people at school involved. Got it? Right. right. Okay, so then... Okay, this happens, right? You say get them involved, get two different involvements. But if the administrators, the administrator and the counselors are not on the same page as what the parent is saying, what happens then? I mean, can it, something still be done if this happens? Like you said, it happens. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if the administrator or the counselor is not on the same page. I'm going to go get the information myself. I will determine what happened, and I will take either no action or criminal action. I determine. We have our we have our teachers that call or administrators say, this kid did this and he, uh, I want him to give a ticket. Well, you want him to give a ticket, then you give him a ticket. Uh, I'm the only one authorized to give a ticket is me. <laughs> so I make that determination, right. not the principal. And it's not the first time that he's been bullied in that sense. Just, I, it's it's something that's that's. You know you know you know how often. How frequent that happens in our district? Yes, I do because, like I said, I work with. Okay, so know, with I think when the child is never reported or never complained to anybody. Well, the know, child well, has complained. Now, he now, once complained. he complained, now we start the process. He complained, but he started complaining, complaining last, last year, and then he complained again this year, and it's still not being resolved. So I have a. That's why he run away from the school because he feel nobody. Okay, look, hold on. Let me tell you something else too that we haven't covered. Um, uh, along with everything else, I need you to keep your uh, keep track of your kids because there's a huge, huge percentage of our kids that have learning disabilities that are not identified. They have processing issues, and then we think, well, he's just not behaving. He's behaving. He's he's venting out because he's dyslexic. He, he this that whatever. He needs meds. And those behaviors, that's why sometimes they run home. Sometimes they don't want to go to school. They don't do well in school. They, they, they vent out in the only way they know how, behavior. But I can't tell you how many of our kids have processing issues. And we don't, we don't identify them to when, never sometimes. I have one of my best friends, his son was dyslexic. They figured out until the 10th grade, it's too late. So they, they, they develop coping skills. And I've talked to some professionals that do this kind of therapy thing. 
by the fifth grade. If they've been developing coping skills from first to fifth grade, it takes years to correct that. They have to erase everything they learn and start over again. So, mijito or mijita, they may not be lazy. They may have problems. That's the truth nationwide. I, I deal with a lot of professional people. I'm just a dumb police officer, but I listen really well. You know? And I know that for a fact. All right, anything else? I think that as parents, we need to really realize that not all our, I mean, all our children, whether we want to see it or not, they are not perfect. Thank you. And we as parents, we need to start realizing and take our pride out of it. Just because our child is acting one way, oh, well, he's a Because I can't tell you, thank you for saying that, because I can't tell you how many times we have to make a call, and the parents, instead of trying to figure out what went wrong or how to fix their child, they say, not my kid. And right off the bat, that's a, oh, we got, we got issues. Right. Can I go now? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Thank you. 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 Thank teaching style, okay, that's all that is, it's different. Okay, but hold on, I got an answer. See, see who you are. Look, look, like any profession, any profession, doctors, lawyers, police officers, there's, there's, there's ones that are not good, right? But the honest, the honest truth is that most teachers are, because they're doing that because they have a passion to teach. They don't get, they don't get paid a lot of money. All right, so, but, well, we have teachers, and I'm gonna tell you the category. Just like, I'm gonna go with police officers. We have young police officers, they just started. They wanna go arrest everybody. Yeah. Yeah. We have people that, that have been with it for a while. They know. Huh? Check it out. Yeah. And then you have the old timers, I ain't arresting nobody. <laughs> so, same thing with the teachers. You have a young, eager teacher, and then you have one that's mature, and has got it down, and then, Poquitito, way over here, you have something just kind of hanging on for two more years. Right? Right? right. right. So. I agree with that, but you know, my, my point of view is that I just, I'm always involved with my children and everything, but that's not the children that the parents are not there. And so they don't need that from a teacher. You know, I had, and I can tell you, you know, the wonderful teachers that I had growing up, and, you know, and the ones that my, my son and my daughter have, that they're wonderful. I mean, they, I have one teacher that she comes from far away to teach in my side of town. Um, and, and I'm very grateful. And I make a point to tell them that I'm grateful that they're already in my life. So I know we also have some people that, you know, they're coming well, to help I agree. I agree. What I'm telling you is I get to work with thousands of teachers. Thousands. And for the most part, well, you know, you have a right as a parent to say, I don't think this is a good match. I want my child I got and start that process. The, the principal may say, well, no, we got to do this. Well, you know, start documenting. This is what had this kind of behavior, this kind of behavior. And ultimately, we can change our kids somewhere. You know, you have a right as a parent. You have a right as a parent. If, if your kid's being bullied, and you go through that process, you have a right to put him in another school. In the end, it always falls back to the parents. It always does. It falls back, back to the parents. The thing is, I had a question as far as if a child is trying to report bullying to a teacher or an administrator. Like, uh, my son was bullied from pre-K all the way up through fifth grade in his elementary school. And um, one of the comments made when I tried to report to a teacher that he was being bullied and this was going on was, well, we can't take the report from you. We have to hear it from the student. But the student 
is afraid to go and speak up to somebody else. And, and I was kind of brushed off as, well, we can't do anything if you report it. We can only do it if the student reports it. I don't know, we told you that doesn't go ahead. And, and that was what I was wondering, is it just, does it have to come from the student, or if the student can find the parent, can the parent go and report it? Because I tried speaking to the principal, I tried speaking to the teachers, that in multiple teachers over the years, I went so far as to pull my children out of school and homeschool them for two years. I have an answer for you. Because it was so extreme. I have an answer for you. You get the child, you get the parent, you get the officer, you get the principal, I get the information from everybody, all inclusive, I'll make a report. So we can, as parents, call as people if... Well, hold on a second. No, we got, yeah, you can. Hold on. Wait, wait. Wait, wait. No, hold on. Hold on. Always go the right way. Talk to the teacher. Talk to the administrator. I want to make a report. That's my right. I want to make a report. I'm in here at your office. You make a meeting with the principal. This is what's going on. If give him a chance to fix it. If you don't think that's enough, then say I want to make a report. I want you to call our district police, and I want to make a report right now. But don't call us just randomly, because I don't even. It's not even a good idea for the teachers. Teachers have kids in their classes they're having problems with some of your kids and they want to call us from their from their, from their uh, classroom right. that's a process <laughs> who's this where are you i'm on the second floor where <laughs> you know so you know i don't want to miss it lead to tell you well just call us in well, no no there's a process you know go through your process first yeah uh -huh. right. and if they I'm just asking if, say for example, the administration does not want to call it again. It's not their decision. It's your decision. If that's what you're asking me. Uh -huh. Okay. You have a right. It's your child. You have a right. I prefer you go through them because it's, it's, an, it's, a, it's, it's cleaner that way, but it doesn't have to be that way. Actually, following up on your comment, Angie, um, in your packet is what I've titled Teacher Conference Guide, but it can be applied regarding bullying, documentation, I just want to go out with what um, Sergeant Calder said, document who was there, what, and this can also help guide yourself so you don't approach the teacher or principal or whoever, you know, upset and somewhat, uh, yeah. Sometimes you may, have a, you may have a good rapport with the teacher and you can kind of start working together. You don't have the rapport, you skip the teacher, go to the counselor. You don't have a group for the counselor, go to the principal. And we'll go on and go on until we figure it out. And there's a, also on the teacher's aspect, although there has to be like five steps before a, a, a student is actually, you know, and every day is different. You can't go from the day before. If they're doing it on a daily basis, you need to be moved to a, a side. They need to be written up. They have to be conference. They have to be spoken. And there's a process. And so not just automatically because one day this is happening and it's been happening it has to be documented from the teacher's point of view that's true but but remember the inappropriate unacceptable against the law you can go from here to here then i'm involved and that is the process i am the process okay so you don't think well my my that kid has to be misbehaved five times no 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 no. we're not, we're not saying that we're saying you know we're saying they can go from from harmless name calling and they're going to take care of it administratively to now they put their hands on my kids now this is where we come in so where, where would be the best to train every single year how to interact with our students we make sure the best we can that that officer is a good fit for that middle school or that high school right now having said that most middle school kids are bigger than the officers okay so you know we have to wear many different hats and our guys do an amazing job. We handle over 5,000 calls a semester, all right? That's 5,000 calls SAP doesn't have to make. And sometimes, sometimes you can do the nurturing thing. Sometimes you have to be a little heavy-handed because I don't have, you know, it's, there is no negotiating. It's what the law says. That's what we need to teach your kids. Do the right thing for the right reason. Ain't gonna be a problem with the law, officer. I, I guarantee it. And if there is, he's in trouble. And it's just, Every officer has a different way of doing this. Remember I told you about the young officer? I had one, I had one, I had one. And it was just a matter of, of open your eyes. Had a young girl, one of the middle schools, got in trouble in the morning because she was riding something, all right? So they already dealt with it, all right? They already gave her a ticket for riding on the wall. Beautiful young lady, eighth grade. In the afternoon, she was still, she was still fired up. 
So she misbehaved again on the second floor. So the officer, within his rights, because of certain things she did, brought her in and arrested her. What I told him aside, I said, look, dude, I said, why are you here? Uh, I said, well, you're not here to work with the kids. You know, we got issues. I said, you, I said, take it, take it like this. You knew she was already upset. She already gave her a class seat, take it. Does she, does she have a history of misbehavior? No. So all those variables come into play, and we, we teach our guys, but sometimes you have to make an instant decision, and I don't have time to be a counselor. I'm not a principal, I'm a police officer. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough deal. It's a tough deal. Now, we have guys that volunteer hours, they're there because they want to be with the kids. I have a guy on my shift that coaches the kids, coaches basketball for Fox Tech and Edison, free, on his own time. He has a passion. So, you know, it's like the teachers, mostly good, there's a few not so good. Same thing with everybody. Just watch your opinion on something. I have a child who just gets bus from one school to the other. So in the afternoon, I go to the home school and wait for him there so the on the field can get the damn bus. While I'm there sitting in my vehicle waiting for him, um, I notice that there's a, usually a different little group of kids still hanging out at that school. And usually there's anywhere from 20 to 30 kids. But these, uh, these are junior high school kids. And the thing that concerns me is that, one, why are they so late there at the school? We're talking about 4.30 or 5 o'clock. And two, um, these kids are literally pretty much beating each other up. I've seen a group of 8 to 10 boys throw one kid in the middle and everybody jumps on him. Then, you know, they get off of him and they run and target another kid, do the same thing to him, you know, and I'm, my concern is for the poor kid in the bottom that, you know, well, something's going to get hurt. Have you, have you told the administration? I've contacted the administration. What did they say? Nobody ever comes out. I call the office, the vice principal's car is there, other cars or vehicles are there. Nobody answers. Okay, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna attack this real quick. Two different two different extremes. First is your concern, right? Right. Okay. So we don't want we don't want that to happen. We don't want to we don't want to visualize that kind of behavior. So you call us, right? You say you know what? We've got a, a group of maybe 10, 15 kids. They may be to, up to some stuff that's not legal or might hurt themselves. We'll make it. Right. But if I'm the parent of those kids. I'm gonna say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm working late. My kid has the right to be there. He's not doing nothing wrong. So we have to balance, okay, what is going on? Okay. Well, the school has even a challenge program inside the school. I mean, my thing is, if I'm working late, then my kid is gonna be in that challenge program, and he's gonna be in, in the school. He has no business right so who's, outside. So who's responsible for that behavior? Well, the parents are, I guess, you know. And that's the problem with the policing thing. Everybody wants to dump it on the police, but it starts with the parents. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And find out. We'll make a, a, a and all the challenge programs are run different. So you have you have a concern with that? Bring up the people running the challenge. And then the people at the school. And then the PTV will get a hold of us. But we have parents. Okay, school's out. All right. Kids uh, leaving the campus. Leaving the campus. See the teacher, see the principal. That period of time, the teacher walks in. Kids still on the campus, across the street from the school. They acting bad, they cutting up. Who's responsible? After they cross the street, to the, to the time they get home. Is it the school, you, or the parents? It's the parents. Okay. I had a school. I had a middle school one time. I had a principal coming from a middle school one time. All right. All right. All right. This is how this is how this is how bizarre it gets for us. I had a principal years ago coming from a school in our district, a middle school. It says, "I got kids over there across the street hanging out, dad, 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 doing that, that, that." Okay. I knew which I knew who he was talking about. I I worked this east side for eight straight years. Right. I know my east side. <laughs> so I said, where is it exactly? He goes, well, so and so and so, and they're over there, but and they're sitting out there on that sofa, and they're no, no, no. I said, okay, sir. I said, here's the problem with this. You can't do nothing about it because a, 
you're across the street. B, most importantly, they live there. So what do you want me to do? They live in the court, sir. Well, what you want me to do about that? I can't do that. So some of the calls we get are bizarre. Right, because a lot of parents was having that problem like, okay, I drop my kid off and you see them going in the door and then they do a U-turn and walk off the campus Parents, if school haven't started, parents... Now, if, if they're at school late, I'll get a, we get a lot of calls from the custodians. Hey, I got these kids hanging around here. They're, they might, you know, we'll go, we'll run, we'll run them out. Okay. We'll run them out. And yours, was it a, was it a bus stop? It's, 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 well, there's no bus stop. It's okay. Our now, our bus stops, we're going to make sure they're safe. I want your child to get out of the bus and feel safe. Right. If there's kids out there that are too old, they're hanging around, call us. All right, that's all, that's all I got. Anything else? I'm sorry, right here. Report it to the asking for a supervisor. The campus guys, the officers on campus have their supervisors. I'm in charge of patrol. So just call a supervisor. It's never tolerated and it won't be tolerated. Right? It's, just, it's always a, a certain level of All right, thank you very much. Yeah.